welcome everyone and thank you so much for your time uh, to learn about this program that's available for your students thanks to funding from the district. Um, this program is not costing the students or their families any money to use. Um, and so the, the purpose of today's session is for you all to hear about Tutor.com. We're gonna talk about what it is, how it works, why we do what we do, how we do what we do, um, and then how to engage students with this resource. Um, so my name is Kara Hall. I'm the Director of Client Services. I know I show up as Kara Froman on your screen because I've tried to change my profile many times with Zoom in it. It won't let me do it. I think I have to send them a marriage certificate or something. So um, uh, anyway, so we'll just uh, go ahead and get started um, with um, you know, my role here at tutor.com is to help your district implement the program and to help the usage grow. And so that's part of what we're working on today as we prepare to kick this off now and use tutor.com throughout the coming year. All right, so this quote that you see on the screen here is um, something that we get very often from students um, after every learning engagement with one of our tutors in our online classroom, the students are pre presented with an opportunity to submit a survey. Um, and this is part of that survey is they can just enter some subjective comments and about what they thought about their session, their tutor, um, you know, whatever they have on their mind, they'd want to let us know. Uh, we collect these uh, comments and we do provide them to you and to the district in the form of some reporting that we have uh, that happens on the other end. Um, if you are typing, uh, could you please go on mute so that we are not carrying that sound into the session? Thank you so much. Um, all right, so let's warm up a little bit. I'm going to ask you a question. Um, so we're looking at homework challenges today, and this is a program that helps address some of those. So I kind of wanted to hear from the group. Um, with a group this size, you can maybe unmute your microphone and ask a question out loud or submit it through the chat. Um, the answer, to, your answer to this question, which is um, what are some of the homework challenges that your students face? when they are, you know, completing assignments or studying for quizzes and tests and things. Um, at, and when they're at home and they're not in your class, they're not with you and you're not available to help them, what are some of the challenges that you hear or you see the next day um, coming from your students? All right, I see distractions. Um, from social media and from the internet. I believe you 100%. I have a 13-year-old, uh, a rising eighth grader in my house, um, and we are constantly um, trying to refocus her and, you know, removing that, that phone or taking away that, those electronics is a huge deal. Um, so that is definitely a, a, distract, a detractor from getting homework assignments completed and getting things uh, from class to more firmly cement in that brain. Uh, let's see. Not understanding the questions or not knowing where to start, not utilizing their notes. Um, that all sort of plays into the same thing. Sometimes students are right with you in class and they, they think they get it or they, you know, they take notes uh, when they're in class, but then when they get home, eh, they're a little fuzzy maybe on, you know, how do I get started with this? Or, what am I supposed to do next? I, I, maybe I missed something in my notes or I'm not really following them. Um, that, those are definitely some challenges that we see often. Um, the student was not able to get help from someone at home. Yes, that's a big one. And I, when I have an opportunity to talk to students about tutor.com, I always ask them, what do they do when they get home and they're working on their homework and they get stuck on something? And the students will say, oh, I'll ask my parents or I will Google it or I will ask my friend or what have you. And uh, I always ask them then if you've asked your parents, how well does that work out for you? And oftentimes the students will say not, not well at all. Um, and I know that to be true um, as a parent myself, as I'm sure a lot of us are, um, you know, I consider myself to be a reasonably educated person, but there was a certain point in time um, during middle school, actually, when I stopped being able to help my son with his homework. Um, and chemistry was definitely a no-go for me. 
um, because I did not do well in chemistry myself when I was in high school. So I really couldn't, I, I really wasn't equipped um, to help him once he got into high school. I really wasn't equipped to be the one uh, to, to help him. Plus I was also mom. And so he didn't really necessarily think I knew what I was talking about all the time either, just because, you know, I'm just mom. And, you know, to him, I cooked dinner and I pulled his socks, but, you know, um, so that that's a problem. And sometimes, you know, parents are equipped maybe with the subject area, maybe they can, you know, provide the content um, expertise, but oftentimes, you know, not in all subjects. And uh, even if they do, if the students does have someone at home who can help them, um, that, that person might not be the best teacher, uh, might not be the best person to ask the question because there is that parent-child dynamic at play there. Um, all right, so they don't read and don't know how to deconstruct writing prompts. Yeah, that happens a lot um, where they, you know, skim through the instructions. I mean, how, we're just constantly referring um, students back to the instructions that they got from their teachers and uh, their, their writing prompts that they're getting. Um, and so, yes, all of the above are definitely things that uh, tutor.com can help with. Uh, we do see those types of things all the time. So the answer to those things, are, you know, maybe student was also absent from class that day. Maybe they didn't get the benefit of their in-class instruction. Um, this is something that, this is tutor.com as a resource that can be plugged in to students to help them with all of those above challenges. And then it gives you a level of, you know, holding the students accountable for, um, you know, not coming to class with their homework completed or, you know, trying to catch you before school or, or you know, just trying to, um, because they don't have maybe a resource or different places where they can go for help when they're at home or over the weekends, with the providing this resource for them, you can say, all right, here's that level of accountability here because you have tutor.com and you can, uh, you can really get them uh, plugged in with that resource. There's a, we serve a variety, wide variety of students, I mean, from all skill levels. So that student that's really struggling in your class or that student is even maybe ahead or, you know, on par with everyone else in your class. Um, those students are going to have questions sometimes also. Those students are going to have writing prompts that they need to deconstruct. They're going to have um, those types of, of needs as well. And so getting them plugged into the resource is going to be important also, not just for struggling students. All right, so let's talk a little bit about why we do uh, what we do, how we do it, um, and what our educational values are at tutor.com. Uh, we are student-centered, so the student is going to do the work. Um, the tutor is going to support the student and provide that instruction where needed. So I'll give you an example from a session transcript that I read one time, uh, where the, it was a calculus session and the student was uh, presenting a calculus problem that they were working on for homework, and the tutor was helping the student along. The student was doing the work, and then the tutor determined that the student had never properly learned how to factor. So the tutor was able to plug that little bit of instruction in right there and then continue going on. And then the student was able to be much more proficient with that calculus work that they were bringing to the session. So it's all about the student and we're automatically coming along in line with what you're doing in class because it's completely your class assignments, your uh, study guides and things like that that students are um, working on when they are able to, um, to you know, use tutor.com and ask those questions. It is individualized, so there is a one tutor to one student in every session, um, and that is um, the place where it's uh, anonymous, so there's no personal information ever shared between a tutor and a student. Um, it's also just in time, so this is available 27, 24-7, excuse me, on demand, uh, whether the student's working in the evening or at night, on the weekends, anytime you're not available, the tutor.com tutors are, so that we can plug the resource in uh, as soon as the student is um, stuck, before they get frustrated, before they, you know, just give up entirely or, you know, uh, try to find some other way of, of getting help um, that's not going to be as timely for them. Um, it is interactive. We use an online classroom, so the tutor and the student are meeting together as individuals in an online class, classroom, our platform, uh, which I'll show you in just a minute. Um, it's also gonna be adaptive. So the tutor's gonna pace the, the, the session to meet the student's needs. 
uh, whether that student needs a quick check of a homework question to make sure they've done it correctly. Um, that may be a five or 10 minute session where if the student needs um, a lot of help or is really struggling with some content, that session may be quite a bit lengthier. So our average session length is about 25 minutes long or so. Um, and sometimes obviously much shorter, sometimes much longer, just depending on what the student needs. Um, it is supportive. So I mentioned already that we're coming right along in line with what the students are working on in class and we're gonna be results focused. So our sessions end when the student has reached what we call an educationally sound conclusion. Um, and that is that sort of aha moment once the student says, oh, okay, now I get it and demonstrates to the tutor that they have an understanding of the concept that they have brought uh, to the session originally. All right, so who are our tutors? Our tutors are uh, college students, they have to be at least a sophomore in a, an accredited uh, college or university. Uh, they are oftentimes grad students or teachers or professors or folks in the industry, in the field um, that are subject matter experts. And that's the first thing that we test them on uh, when we get a tutor applicant. Um, only about uh, one to two percent of those who apply to become tutors with tutor.com will make it out the other side. Uh, the first thing they're going to get is a subject exam. So we, we require these subjects uh, exams to demonstrate expertise in any subject that a tutor wants to tutor in. So when, um, uh, for example, if uh, there's a calculus, using the calculus example from earlier, if we have a calculus tutor applicant um, and that tutor wants to tutor in calculus, that doesn't mean they're also going to be able to tutor in you know, geometry and algebra one and algebra two they have to independently pr uh, prove their subject matter expertise in each of those subjects before they'll be allowed to tutor. So only about 7% of our applicants even pass those subjects exams. They're very rigorous. Then we pair them with a quality control expert, someone who will you know, work with them one-on-one. -on -one. They'll be doing interviews, mock sessions, um, uh, things like that. Um, and then we're going to submit, they're going to submit to background checks. So federal, state, local criminal uh, history check, um, as well as an educational credentials check. Uh, they're going to be given a lot of professional development, a lot of access to resources. Uh, they're going to start provisionally tutoring sessions and then they become part of this ongoing quality control process that we have in this, depicted here in this circle. So uh, the student feedback at the end of that post, you know, that uh, survey at the end where the student provides feedback on the sessions. We have manual, you know, that quality uh, uh, control specialist is uh, reading those session transcripts and we have technology running on the session transcripts as well, reading those um, to review them. That um, the quality control specialist is going to prepare an evaluation, get back the feedback to the tutor and so on and so on. So that's our quality control process for our tutors. So fast facts about the tutor.com program uh, for your district. It is 24 hours a day, seven days a week on demand access to subject matter expert tutors. It is uh, students getting individualized help on their assignments, their papers being proofread, their uh, math homework getting completed. Um, all of those things are, are possible through tutor.com. Um, the students are gonna access tutor.com through Canvas. Uh, so it's going to appear as an option for students um, in Canvas, and it is um, uh, the it's going to be all subjects of math, English, science, a foreign language. We even have study skills coaching. So if students need to get help with things like getting organized or taking notes, we have tutors. Uh, we call it study skills coaching. Those tutors are able to help students with those things as well. Uh, we offer a uh, breadth of AP subjects, um, lots of, um, there's lots of resources there for students who are preparing for the SAT, the PSAT, or the ACT. Um, there are tutors who can help them as they're working through those prep materials. We even have a SAT and ACT prep course in our service that students can access through their tutor.com login. Um, that's a, a prep uh, course for either one of those high stakes tests um, from the Princeton Review. And they have account access, so they're going to have an account that's going to give them uh, an online locker, which is where they can store files. So maybe they take a picture of their, um, their textbook 
or they uh, have their the file they're working on, like a, a PowerPoint or a Word document or Excel spreadsheet, something like that, they can store those things in their online locker, bring them into session uh, now or in the future. And they're also gonna be able to see all of their previous sessions. I mentioned the sessions are recorded, there are transcripts that are available for, uh, for those who have administrative access to the usage data. Uh, you will have access to those previous sessions and the students will have access to their own previous sessions in their tutor.com account as well. So they can back, go back and review them, study from them. Um, you can see them again also if you'd like. All right, so I wanted to give you some examples of what a session looks like. Um, and to give you some examples, and these are just completely random examples. Um, I just went in and pulled uh, based on the subject and the grade level of the session, um, some things so you can sort of see what it might look like for a, you know, tutor.com session. Um, and so I've got some examples. These session transcripts show up in your report as links, hyperlinks, and that gets you to a page that looks very similar to this. Um, the students also have a, an option of connecting with a tutor in a speaking and listening. Uh, we call it a voice connection. Um, and so sometimes students taking, you know, higher level math um, courses like to talk through those problems as opposed to typing it out. It just depends on the student's preference. Um, in all of these cases, so that we can see them on the screen and read them, I pulled sessions that were not voice connections because that creates a recording of the audio and uh, it does create a uh, text transcription of that audio that you can read. However, um, I just pulled sessions that are, you know, just using where the student and the tutor are, in, are collaborating in our online classroom, but they're communicating via text chat, um, they're type chatting back and forth. So you can see here uh, at the top, the date, the time the session started, um, how long the session lasted and what subject it was in. Uh, you can put this in a printer friendly format if you'd like, and you can also uh, replay like a movie. They replay like a video for, for students and for, um, and for uh, administrators or teachers as well. Um, anybody with this link can replay it. It's kind of neat actually. You can just see the session in real time. You can replay it at twice as fast or five times as fast as normal because like I mentioned, our average session length is about 25 minutes. So sometimes students don't want to sit through an entire session again they're reviewing it. So we give them the opportunity to go more quickly until they find the spot that they want to see. All right, so uh, this is um, the question that the student asked. So there's not actually a problem. It's just the student saying, I don't understand polynomial functions. And you can kind of see how the tutor gets started. We're gonna be asking questions of the student to find out what their assignment is, what their instructions are, um, and getting the student to respond. So you can kind of read through that um, and also the tutors are very encouraging. So this becomes that sort of safe place for students to ask questions. Uh, maybe they don't wanna ask in front of their peer group um, in class. Uh, they can actually get help one-on-one -on -one here. Um, so it's great. And the tutors know that by the time students get to us, they're oftentimes pretty um, stressed or frustrated. So we wanna make sure that you know, the tutors are very encouraging and they oftentimes use, you know, emojis and, and very encouraging words during their sessions. Um, okay, so the tutor's getting down to work here. How can I help you today? Seems you have some polynomials and um, the student says, yes, I don't understand how to do them. Um, okay, so let's write it on the border in the chat. Uh, so that's the student and the tutor getting the student to engage with the problem. Um, and giving them the options for, you know, what problem they're working on and giving them the options for kind of putting it on the board and like getting down to work. Um, so then you can see the conversation unfold here. Um, and then at the end of the transcript, you'll see what the whiteboards ended up looking like at the end of each session. Um, so the tutors, again, asking questions and providing instruction, seeking responses from the student. Um, I'm going to scroll down here. This was a 30 some odd minute session. So we're gonna go down here. You can see the conversation sort of unfold. The, um, they're adding a whiteboard. So they're adding a tool to the online classroom. So anything that was shared during a session, whether it was a web resource or a file or um, another, you know, another tool that was used, you'll be able to see the evidence of that in the chat. 
um, and the post session survey, to, I mean, the post session um, link here to the transcript as well. <clears throat> all right, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to scroll down. You can see all the conversation. And then you can see here um, that the student, you know, gets to the answer. Um, and then the tutor confirms that and asks if there are any question about the problem or the steps um, before disconnecting. So the student's saying, yes, I got it. Thank you. Um, if there's any other problem you wanted to work with, that's it. Thank you very much. Okay. So they're then ending their session by the time that student has demonstrated that they have an understanding of what they're working on. So, um, so here's just an example of what the, the ending whiteboards look like for that particular session. And we do uh, hundreds or thousands of these, um, depending on the time of year, every day, every night, um, all across the country. Um, and so here's an example, another example of a session transcript that's a geography session where the student's asking this question. But you can see that this is a completely different tutor, a completely different subject, but you can see the session sort of plays out in a, in a very similar way where this session, they're actually using, um, the, the tutor and the student are sharing ideas uh, for the essay or for whatever they're writing about um, from that question. So you can see the, the, this, the kind of conversation unfold here where the tutor is doing the very same thing where they're um, you know, having the conversation, they're giving some instruction where needed, they're asking questions of the student and getting the student to respond there. Um, and so the student is engaged continually throughout the session. So that's the, um, the end of the session there. And then um, the, you know, the, what they were looking at here in this case, as they were discussing was, were these maps. And then we also used our text editor to sort of work on some writing uh, around whatever the content of that session was. So. Um, this is another example. This happens to be a sixth grade session, but um, it, it's still relevant. It would still work for any student, um, middle school or high school and elementary school for that matter in the same way uh, in that this student is asking where, where comas go in a sentence. Um, and so um, in this case, uh, the tutor has shared a web resource that has some rules on it um, for the student to have. Now this example, gives uh, a, a, what it looks like if that web resource was shared. It's there in the chat um, so that if the student doesn't open it up in a separate window or doesn't make note of that URL during session, they can go back to their previous sessions and still have access to anything that um, the tutor may have given them that would help. This is really helpful when, um, say for example, um, the, the student needs help researching on a history paper or something like that, um, the, the, they have really great websites that have these educationally sound uh, vetted resources on the topic that the student's working on, the tutor can share those um, also. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go down to the end. This is very similar, just uh, dealing with commas. Um, the students and the tutor are talking about different examples um, and they're um, working again until the student has indicated, yep, I got some, you know, it's the student saying, let me take some other notes real quick. Um, the tutor's asking if there's anything they'd like to practice more. And then the tutor reminds the student, you can go back to our session, um, go by going to previous sessions in your account, okay? Um, so that they don't have to worry about taking notes on everything, you know, from the session, the tutor reminds them. So if there's anything that the student's not really familiar with that they, uh, need to know like how to use any of the tools or any part of the online classroom or even how the service works. Really, the tutors can help them get engaged really quickly and point out things like that. So, um, okay, so uh, let's see. It looks like there weren't, oh, there was some whiteboard uh, they shared from that, from that resource that the tutor had sent this relevant piece of, of information for that session. And then they were taking some notes there on the screen as they were working um, there. And Kara, I just wanna add, I put it in the chat that regardless of content area for all of our um, disciplinary, you know, all of our content, we would like our students to upload the prompt and the rubric distributed by the teacher so that it's a very, you know, focused session because they could write a great essay that doesn't answer the prompt at all. So we just wanna make right. sure that all of our teachers hear that. That's right. So there are 
uh, elements of tutor.com that what you're looking at, we were just looking at were sessions from live, you know, on demand sessions. We do also offer through tutor.com uh, the ability for students to submit an essay uh, for review and sort of send off, you know, a piece of writing for tutor review and that the form that they fill out when they do that also asks for that type of information. What's your rubric? What's your prompt? You know, what's your assignment about um, before? So no matter whether it's a, a on-demand live one-to-one -one session or if that student has sent off a piece of writing for review, they're still going to collect that information from the student um, so that the student can use it to guide the session or the review of the essay. All right, so let's uh, look how about how tutor.com works and I'll give you a kind of a peek of the online classroom, but Students are going to access through Canvas. I think I saw something in the chat saying that it is available in Canvas courses now. Um, it says it's 24-7 online tutoring. So tutor.com there is in the list. Um, it's going to look something similar to this uh, here. When the student authenticates over to tutor.com, they're going to initiate their session on demand. It's going to ask them to fill out some information. They're, that's going to help us match us with the match the student with the appropriate tutor. So the um, student will tell us what topic, for example, math, what subject, for example, uh, geometry. Um, select their grade level, uh, identify if they want to just type chat with the tutor or add a voice connection, um, and then uh, enter the question they want to work on. They can attach a file if it's relevant, and then they click. Uh, connect now. Once they click connect now, uh, they're going to um, be put into a brief waiting queue as we match the student with a tutor in our online classroom. We do try to keep this um, this wait as you know as short as we can. Uh, there is a team of folks at tutor.com called Learn the Learning Services team. Their job is to recruit, uh, onboard, mentor, monitor. Uh, schedule the tutors. They're responsible for all of our pedagogy. They're responsible for our quality control processes. Um, and what they do is, the, uh, with the scheduling piece, is use a lot of predictive analytics so that we can anticipate, hopefully, what our uh, demand will be and make sure that we have adequate tutors and then some uh, to meet that demand. So we want to keep the students waiting as, as little amount of time as we can. Um, I've got a question asking, uh, does it have the math one, math two, math three as options to choose? Uh, we could potentially do something like that. It doesn't have that right now. Right now it would be um, under math, it would be like, you know, uh, elementary math, middle grades math, algebra one, algebra two, geometry, calculus, quantitative literacy, that type of stuff. Um, but we can, with some mapping, potentially add in um, if that's what your courses are called, that math one, math two, math three. So, uh, Ms. Cunningham, you and I can talk about that offline, and we can we can um, make a changes to your subject menu to reflect whatever's most relevant for the students. Um, highest level of math that we offer. So we would actually. So it'd be those um, the the statistics and calculus and and um, the those types of of courses and that we actually, the tutors will actually work through, we call it's actually a, you know, K through 20 program. So students are, I mean, tutors are actually uh, working with students also who are in their, you know, freshman year of college or taking their sort of intro college level courses in those subjects. Um, okay, so I'm reading the chat about access. Um, they'd have to be enrolled in the Canvas course. Um, okay, so that's something that um, that looks like that enrollment will kick in for students once they're maybe once the new school year is starting or if they are enrolled in summer school, unless I'm misunderstanding um, what you're saying. Okay, great. All right, so um, so up here in the upper right-hand corner of this gray box where there's this sort of uh, highlighted pull-down menu here, right now it says English. If the student clicks that, they can also select in Espanol or Espanol. So if the student 
uh, is um, bilingual Spanish speaking and would like to be tutored in Espanol by bilingual subject matter expert tutors. They can click that and connect to tutors who will help them in all subjects of math um, and science and history. And we even have study skills, bilingual study skills tutors, and we have bilingual writing tutors in Espanol. There they can connect with those tutors by clicking that menu. Up at the top here, you can see some other features. So um, connecting with the tutor now is by and large what students come to tutor.com to do. They can also schedule a session if they'd like to. Uh, I think on demand is really the beauty of, of tutor.com, but if students, there's some students that prefer to use tutor.com this way, they certainly are able to if they'd like. Um, that's where there's a scheduling feature. So if they want to, you know, say work on their homework, next Tuesday at three o'clock, they can schedule a session and log in and, and have that session at that time. Um, they're also able to, as I mentioned, to submit um, some writing for review by a tutor. Um, they can uh, use some other tools like practice quizzes. These are completely self-serve. They are not uh, scored and, and graded in terms of being able to be reported to you how students uh, do. We can show you, you know, in the reports which resources were accessed, but these are all topically based. And if a student wants to sort of in a self-directed way kind of brush up on their skills, but it's not necessary to use tutor.com to have, you know, to use any kind of, of the, pri the practice quizzes at all. Um, we also have uh, some other resources in this other, other tools tab, um, and that's where the students would access the SAT ACT prep course from Princeton Review called SAT ACT Essentials that I referenced earlier. All right, here's our online classroom. And I'm going to, that's kind of gives you a, an example of several different views. So there's the whiteboard view. Um, there's the graphing uh, calculator expression editor tool uh, with, you know, employed there. And then like example of what it looks like when the students and the tutor are collaborating in that text editor tool uh, down here in the uh, right-hand corner. But I'm gonna, I have a version of the online classroom that we can look at. This is just, there's no tutor on the other end. There's um, uh, the chat box here. So this is where um, that, that um, um, they can just chat with their tutor. You'll see the student is not identified. Um, the tutor is only identified by a first name and last initial and no personal information is shared. The whiteboard space is here and this would be the place where um, if the student had shared a file, it would show up in this space. If a web resource is, is shared during a session, it would show up in this space. This becomes sort of the place for that collaboration in addition to the chatting um, that's happening. So, and then of course, if there's a voice connection, the student's speaking and listening to the tutor uh, while they're working um, instead of using the chat, the type chatting. Uh, but on this whiteboard, um, you can, you know, draw, it's very normal whiteboard tools that you would expect uh, to, to see. Um, you can make all kinds of different, um, you can change the thickness of your lines, um, your, your writing. Oh, that's, I'm, still, I'm still on lines, Kara, come on, there we go. Like that. Um, you can uh, import files directly from the session here if you like. That's similar to attaching it to an email. Uh, you can um, bring in commonly used formulas onto the whiteboard. Oops. You can see the whiteboard got bigger as I kind of went down. We call that our growy whiteboard. So it just kind of gives the students enough space, you know, as much space as they need to work their problems. Um, you can also add a whiteboard here. Um, also, and that just gives you another blank page to work from. Um, the, you know, you can cut, copy, paste, undo, redo uh, what you just did. The whiteboard can look like lined notebook paper. It can look like uh, graph paper as well, if needed. There's a graphing calculator expression editor that can be added if needed. There's a code editor. We do have, offer some uh, uh, programming subjects, uh, so students can use the code editor there. Um, they can use a text editor, which I think we saw in one of our session examples. 
um, where you know if you copy and paste some some text onto the text editor and they're working from it, they have the same kind of editing tools that they would if they were using you know Word or something along those lines. All right, so that's the online classroom and how we offer that platform for students and tutors to collaborate on their work. At the end of the session, um, the student can just click this end session button to end. Um, they can print the session directly from, you know, the session before they end it. Um, they can share a file up here too. So there's lots of, it's very flexible platform. And as I mentioned, if there's any, are there, if there are any elements of the online classroom that the tutor, you know, can help the student learn to use, they'll do that um, as well. All right, I mentioned the essay drop-off feature. I wanted to give you a look at the, um, what that kind of process would be like for a, uh, a student. So they're gonna submit a form. They're going to um, fill out the questions. It's a little bit small to read on the screenshot, but they're gonna be indicating, you know, what grade they're in, uh, when their draft is due, when the final version of the essay is due, um, the um, topic of the paper, um, any character limits, um, where are you in the writing process? So if they can say, you know, I think I'm on track, but I'm ready for feedback, or you know, I'm I'm just um, getting started. I need to share ideas, or wherever they are in the in the process with this piece of writing, they can indicate that there, and then they can pick up to two different area additional areas that they want the tutor to focus on. So uh, like properly supporting your argument, crediting, crediting your sources, sentence construction, word choice, et cetera. So then, the, then there's a blank for them to describe their assignment. This would be where they would wanna put their prompt and their rubric in there um, or any uh, instructions that they receive from you. Um, and then um, if, if they can indicate what citation format they're using, if any, they can upload their file. Again, like similar to attaching it to an email. Um, and then click submit. What that does is then that sends that away. And within 12 hours, uh, the, the usually a lot sooner than that, but within 12 hours, the, the um, student will receive a version of their sub the paper that they submitted, the essay that they submitted, along with uh, the comments that the tutor made in the document. The tutor's not making the changes for the student. The tutor's making comments on the document, sending it back. The student applies the changes. Um, and then they're also going to get this summary feedback form. So this gives you a, an idea of, you know, you know what a version of Word looks like with, you know, comments. But the summary feedback form is, it, it's going to contain the feedback from the tutor about, you know, all the different areas that the tutor assessed um, and comments there and that the student can take um, and have that feedback. It also links the essay that was originally submitted the paper that came back from the tutor with the comments, everything's collected there. You can print this off. It's a, it can be printed off as a PDF. And um, there's a very handy tool for students to use um, when they're getting feedback on any piece of writing. It doesn't have to be just for an English class or uh, it, can be, um, it can be for any class that they're writing in. Does someone have a question? I actually do. Um, are they familiar with the AP format? I know with each subject, the essays for AP format are different and how they score them and how they grade them. Are the tutors uh, aware of those types? Yes, and so that would be something for the student to include in that if they're sending off an essay uh, to be evaluated or you know commented on by the tutor, they would include that in the uh, form that goes with, with that essay. Um, that information, so the student, a tutor knows to be reading for those types of things. Um, and then if it's an, an on-demand one-to-one session, um, they're gonna be accessing it through our a menu of AP subjects that we support. So they're gonna be directly working with AP tutors. And maybe you said this already, Do or I, I didn't hear it. Do the teachers have access to what the students are, are getting help with with the tutors or, and how do we get that? So what will happen is you'll go in to tutor.com through the same access that the students have. So by clicking that link in Canvas, the system will recognize your role as teacher, not student, and then will prompt you with a link at the top of your screen to log in to get your usage reports. And I have some, uh, we're not gonna go too far into that just due to time today, what, how to use the usage reports. There's, there are four of them and you'll be able to see 
uh, sessions for any students who clicked to, through to tutor.com from your course. Um, and then, um, and then I have some uh, recorded, previously recorded videos on how to use the client portal and what the reports are that I'll send to Ms. Cunningham and you can get those out to uh, anybody who, you know, wants them. Um, and that will give you an idea of how to use those reports that are in there and what, what they mean. But you'll see a dashboard and uh, have some access to that. Um, there are um, it also, and one of the reports I want to make mention of that we do generate is um, that the tutor is also filling out a survey at the end of each session. Um, and they're going to be noting, notating a couple of things. Number one is they're going to be classifying the content of the session more specifically. So um, that's going to generate a report we call the topic drill down report, which just lets you know what your students are asking about most often. So that might be helpful to kind of get an idea just from the tutor.com usage data, what, what we're seeing your students ask about um, and, you know, from a content perspective most often or least often. Um, and that uh, also uh, the usage reports that you see are going to give you um, the, you know, access to the post-session survey information from like the comments from the students or how they responded to the other questions we ask on the survey. Uh, like, uh, you know, would you recommend tutor.com to a friend? Would you, um, would you, um, you know, what did you think about your, your session, your tutor? Um, and this, they're asking uh, if the tutor.com tutor is helping students be more confident about their schoolwork, be, um, be, uh, improve their grades or get their, you know, help them complete their homework assignments on time. So all that information is there also. All right. So, um, so, and this is just, keep in mind, this is just our kind of our launch phase of this implementation. So uh, my team will be supporting your district throughout the year. Um, so if there's ever a need for, you know, questions, I'll put my contact information up at the end of the presentation. You can certainly reach out to me if there's anything that I can help with. Ms. Cunningham and her team are always your resource, though, for, you know, any questions that you have and uh, we'll get your question answered and we'll be supporting you with anything that you need. So um, if anything else comes up, even after today, don't hesitate to let us know. Um, all right, so the next piece of this and our kind of final piece of, um, of this training is about engaging students with this resource. We use the broccoli analogy here at tutor.com and by that, I mean, we're very fond of saying that we're like broccoli, we're not chocolate cake, um, and that we are, you know, good things happen to your body when you eat broccoli, but it's not going to be necessarily the best, you know, the thing that students are going to choose to eat when, you know, compared with something like chocolate cake. So we're the broccoli, um, and uh, our job collectively is to sort of pour that zesty cheese sauce over the broccoli and make it a little bit more appetizing for students, because um, although we can see the value of the service, a lot of times the students are not convinced uh, because it has the word tutor in it. So if you have a student who is uh, struggling, they're not necessarily going to be that willing necessarily to reach out for additional resources. Um, and, to, and, and then the advanced, more advanced student, um, you know, oftentimes tutoring does not apply. So telling them they have tutor.com is not necessarily going to ring their bell um, until, unless until they get to the point where they are actually uh, trying the service. Um, I've seen this happen when I've had the opportunity to work with students directly on this program is we come into a computer lab or they're in a classroom with their devices or what have you. I give them a little bit of an explanation about what we're doing, but then I get them into session, have them log in and try a session with a tutor. And then you start to see the light bulbs go off when they realize, oh, this is not a tutor as in I'm going to, you know, make an appointment go next Tuesday and they're going to work on their stuff with me. This is actually someone who helps me and only me with my specific question and can really get down to that, giving me the help that I need. Once they see that and they see the breadth of the subjects that are offered to them, they are much more willing and much more able to come back to the service the next time. And I say able be, just because it is uh, oftentimes student may hear about it, they may see a poster, they may see, a, you know, their parents may tell them about it, uh, what have you. All of those things are important ways of reaching out, um, but for the students themselves, what we find is the most effective way is to have them use the, the service um, and to, you know, that way they're more likely to know what it is, 
uh, and remember it the next time they need the help as well. Um, you oftentimes see students coming back that have one have a one session, they're going to come back for, you know, two, three more sessions um, just because of that phenomenon. So with, um, with tutor.com, um, we are intending to be an, an extra set of hands for teachers. Um, if you have a, um, if you have class time, great. If there's a academic enrichment time, I know in a lot of cases, students are sort of voluntold to come to um, different teachers for remediation or help, extra help during some of those types of, of times. That's a great time to plug students into tutor.com um, if you are having it during, you know, used during the school day. If not, um, you know, you can do it several, several different ways, right? So getting the homework done, um, they're maybe incentivizing students in some way or requiring students to use the program. Either approach works. I've heard feedback from teachers that say, absolutely no way am I giving my student extra credit for using tutor.com because they should just be doing it um, because I said so. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, I get that. Um, also, some, you know, so, so it just kind of depends on what your appetite is for something like that. If incentivizing students is something that's going to work for your students, I would say absolutely 100% do it. If there's something they can earn or give them extra credit or drop a low homework grade or whatever the case may be to get the students to the service, um, do that. If you're not comfortable with that and you want to make it a requirement, you know, sometimes I've had teachers say, everybody in my class uses tutor.com twice a week. Or they say, um, before any uh, rough draft of any essay is turned into me, it has to be passed through tutor.com first um, and then giving, make sure the students give themselves time. Um, before they complete their draft to do that. And when we have that situation happen, a lot of times schools report to us that they see the quality of their writing increase overall because by the time the teacher gets the first draft, it's already been through uh, at least one revision from the tutor.com tutors. So, uh, so the, um, also there may be um, classes like credit recovery classes or, you know, remediation classes that are going to help students, you know, maybe stay on track to graduate, those very high stakes classes, um, consider using tutor.com as a requirement in those types of situations too. We do provide a website um, that we have, you know, collected resources for you to use in ways that you already communicate out to your parents to your teachers. So if you have a parent that's coming to you and asking for resources, asking for extra help for their, their student, um, having these materials or having something ready to hand to them is, is really good uh, because that answers that question and gives the parents the information that they need. Um, we also have uh, resources that will help you, you know, maybe if you make newsletter posts or posts where you post assignments um, in your Google Classroom or whatever the case may be, uh, we do have some resources at this website here um, that will, um, you know, kind of help you. And I'll show you those here in just a second. Um, so the, um, the, it's important to share with parents, as I was mentioning, um, announcing at the beginning of the school year um, is important, but also regularly throughout the year because people, parents forget just like kids do. And, um, you know, maybe making the information that you share out through the year, um, you know, relevant to what's going on in your class at that point in time. We will have a, a, a fall, a general fall outreach calendar that's coming out um, very soon. And that will give you some copy you can, you know, borrow and customize and a graphic that you could use if you were going to send that information out to your parents. So we really encourage encourage you to do that communication on a very regular basis throughout the year. We'll have a spring calendar uh, for second semester. We'll have a spring calendar that will be very similar, um, just relevant for spring. Um, newsletters, um, providing, um, you know, information about always including that access information because the service is a website name, tutor.com. But students are not accessing, tutor, you know, through that website, they're not going to www.tutor.com to access. It's really important to include that access through Canvas, access through Canvas, access through Canvas in every communication on every poster or flyer or banner or whatever, um, social media post, uh, classroom post, 
Um, anything that you're doing to communicate at about tutor.com, we encourage you to act in, include that access information as well. Um, and that parent teacher meetings or conferences or things that you are, are you know, going to be engaging with parents directly, which is, you know, typically the, the avenue where they're asking you for those types of resources anyway. Um, having that tutor.com information on hand is really helpful. Um, engaging all students, as I mentioned, very, very important to the success of this implementation is getting the students to use tutor.com. Um, and there are several ways to do that. So you can demo tutor.com in your class. You could conduct in class fingers on keyboards if you'd like to. That's what we call it, where we're talking about the students actually sitting down using the service. Um, so reaching to the struggling students, um, there may be some way where you, um, you know, engage students will say, okay, well, I know tutor.com is, you know, for struggling students, students who excel as well, um, and students who may be Spanish speaking would like to be more comfortable being tutored in Espanol um, than, you know, maybe having tutor.com tutor while you're reviewing for a test or, you know, making sure that they're completing their homework. You can say, you know, there's that level of accountability again, where, you know, if the student comes to class the next day without their homework done, you can say, but you have this resource to use. Um, and, you know, that may be something that you hold them more accountable for when they, um, you know, during class, when they come to you with that challenge um, knowing how tutor.com like plugs in those you know plugs in those holes and helps meet those challenges when students are not in school um, all right so um, also encouraging to students that this is a judgment free zone so there's no such thing as a stupid question at tutor.com we answer all questions um, and students can learn that the you know nobody's going to make fun of them because they don't know anything it's always going to be just that tutor and the student working together um, until the student reaches their aha moment um, consider prescribing usage. So, you know, if there's, if you give a quiz and the student didn't do so well on certain content areas, have them work on those content areas before the next test helps improve their grades. Um, you know, like, as I mentioned earlier, you know, maybe all students use it once a week or twice a week or ha what have you. Um, students reviewing essays with tutor.com before turning them into you. Um, it may be required for for credit recovery, it may be required for DNF students. I mean, there's lots of different ways that you can think of to plug tutor.com in and get students engaged with the resource. It's always important too to share success. So those comments on the post-session survey are generally very positive and a great place to start. Um, and so you hear things that students say or read things that students say. We read these comments, you can read these comments. And getting the word out about the service by saying, this is what our students, I mean, they're anonymized. So, you know, you're not calling out any particular one student for saying something, but you can say, this is what our students are saying. This is what students in my class are saying. This is what students at our school are saying about tutor.com. And um, that's a really great way to share, to share your success and to share out about the different aspects of the program that may be meaningful to more students than just the student who commented. All right, before I put up my information here, I want to do want to click over to our um, partners and promoters page, which is the site where we have these outreach resources collected for you to use. Right now, we're all about summer. Uh, so there's some uh, summer activity kit, but this is where you'll see there is an opportunity for a client portal training. Client portal is what we call our uh, access to, um, to the usage reports. Um, from, you know, from, for your students. And so we do offer a live, I mean, I had some recordings I'll send out, but we do also have an opportunity for a live um, client portal orientation every month. And, you know, you can attend that or, you know, um, if, if need be, if you just want a refresher after the recorded trainings that you view. But anything rele relevant to the season, when the fall cal outreach calendar is available, it will show up in this space. Um, it's all going to be right here on the front page. We do offer digital resources for all kinds of different things. Um, if you're making posts, it helps to make them more eye-catching. Putting something in a newsletter, you can add a little graphic along with it. Um, we are right now, we're doing our, there's a webinar series for summer um, that, you know, you can look at. This is just basically us sharing our expertise from the different aspects of tutor.com. 
uh, out for students and parents. Um, you all can attend if you like. The um, Did You Know Summer Series is kind of fun. Um, so we have Fun Fact Fridays that we're doing. We're putting this out on social media. Um, and you can encourage your parents to connect with us on social media as well, um, because they're there's gonna be content shared that will be potentially applicable to them, their student. Um, then we're gonna get down to some summer graphics here. Sorry for all the scrolling. There are a lot of them. Uh, we have, then they're categorized. So we have some online learning resources here, like if parents mix up in math, it can help. Just, just general things to make the posts more eye-catching. Um, we have posts about, I mean, uh, the graphics about study skills coaching. We have some that have been translated to Spanish. Um, everyday posts and so forth, so on and so forth. We have tab with resources for faculty. So there's a client portal handbook. Um, if you're gonna use tutor.com during the school day, there's a school day usage guide you could follow. Um, we are going to look at, you know, there's some shareable, some handouts, uh, how it works is a step-by-step -step guide. Then there's some video playlists for introductory videos and other things that are linked down at the bottom of that tab. So we are at time. I'm gonna go ahead and put my contact information back up on the screen uh, for you to uh, collect if you'd like to. Um, any other um, questions that you have for me before we go today? Is there any way a student can access tutor.com during summer right now? Because they have like uh, some more packet and things like that for math and English. That would be a question for the district to answer. Um, it depends on how the Canvas link was, you know, given out to the students, um, whether they're going to be able to access it right now or not. That's what Ricardo had put in the chat. I don't know, Ricardo, if you want to explain it or we can just refer to what you put in there. Sure. So it looks like the way our students are accessing tutor.com is that they go into any Canvas course they are enrolled in. And once they get there, it's going to be on your course navigation on the left. And I think uh, they showed a picture of what it looks like. So uh, if there are students that are enrolled right now in um, self-enrolled class, such as a, a sport or a club, or if a teacher had maybe a class that was uh, self-enrolled that wasn't coming from Aries, then the student has access to it right now. If they are not enrolled, they are going to have access once Aries kicks in and um, the changes are reflected in Canvas. And, and we will be sending out more information. I know we have our uh, sixth through eighth grade teachers waiting uh, for our next session, but we will get that information out. We're just so happy to have all of you from the high school level um, who will help, you know, be able to help students starting this out and also colleagues that couldn't make it this summer. And we will have some more PDs on it. So it's not like, oh, if I didn't get everything right this second, you know, we'll make sure that we have additional PDs.